Hello YouTube and welcome back to another before and after. God, I'm not happy about this one. There are a few reasons for this. One, the movie I'm going to go see is one that I can't say the name for, but I'm going to anyway, apparently. That being the Bye Bye Man. Ooh, sounds like the most horrifying name for a horror movie ever, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that's an incredibly stupid name. I don't know why anyone thought that would be an intimidating name. The Bye Bye Man. He's going to politely say goodbye to you. What, what else am I supposed to gather from that? Like, I don't know, he's some weird fisherman thing? I don't know what the heck he is. He's just like a fisherman guy who can say his name. He, something bad happens. I don't know, people will die. He makes you see things. But you're not supposed to say his name. So on the back, so on the frame of a picture that says don't say it and don't think it. Oh yeah, you can't even think his name because he can read your thoughts, I guess. But yeah, so don't say his name and don't think it. Let's write down his name so then people can know his name. So then they know not to say it or think it. What? what? Okay, but it's like... The lack of logic there, it's just amazing, but why someone decided to write that there, I have no idea. I guess if they were just bored, or maybe it was the Bye Bye Man, maybe he wrote his name on there just to, just to throw people off, I guess. But, either way, this movie amazingly looks awful. The one thing I'm really not happy about, about this movie, it's gonna be my very first horror movie in theaters. Yeah, I've never seen a horror movie in theaters before. I always only see them on TV or on the internet, mainly because my parents don't like horror movies. Or at least my mom, and my dad just sort of says, well, what'd your mom say? So, yeah, really, I, I don't really get to see horror movies in theaters, but this is going to be my very first one. Why? Why is this going to be my first one? Why? Why'd it have to be this? Like, I was fighting to go see this movie because I thought that the overall idea sounded kinda neat at least. So I thought, eh, you know, maybe there's something good in it. Or at least it'll be kind of fun to make fun of. But now, after the movie came out, I keep on hearing all these awful reviews. One person that I actually know even gave it a 1 out of 10. So truly... Nothing but good things will come from this movie. So, yeah, I know, just don't base your opinion around the critics, but I'm pretty sure they're right on this one, because the movie does look bad. But then again, it's also a movie called The Bye Bye Man, so what else would you really expect? It's just that this is going to be my very first horror movie in theaters, and really kind of disappointing to me, because I do love horror movies, and honestly, I've always wanted to see one in the, in the theaters, at least, but I really would have preferred seeing Split or something, which unfortunately is not out yet, so I can't see that. If it were out, though, I would definitely want to go see that one instead, but me and my friend already made plans to go and see a horror movie at the theaters. There's nothing else really playing there that we're interested in, at least. And the only one that is there, really, that's a horror movie is the Bye Bye Man. So really, we're kind of out of options here. And her dad's going to go see Star Wars, so we could either wait in the lobby for a few hours while he's watching that, or go see that with it. Why would you just do that? But anyway, yeah, this movie looks awful. Really, it just looks awful. I keep on hearing awful things about it. Um, yeah, I'm not excited for this. I'm probably gonna hate this. I really don't like modern day horror movies. Like, there are a few exceptions. Like, It Follows is good. I saw that one recently. Um, yeah, I don't usually watch more modern day horror movies. Like, I've heard Crimson Peak and the and um, Cabin in the Woods was good, so maybe one day I'll check out those ones, but I still haven't seen those yet, so... Yeah. Frankly, the amount of 
good horror movies that I've seen that are modern is really It Follows and maybe the remake of Amityville Horror, mainly because I just found that one funny. So yeah, really two whole horror movies that are modern that I like. Truly, that, that's a good sign. So, <sighs> really no escaping the inevitable on this. I'll see you guys in the after part. Wish me luck. Okay, so I've gone back from that. <sighs> Jeez. Okay, so what's this movie about? Well, it's the loving tale of a man who even in death refuses to part from his beloved dog. Okay, no, that's not what it's about. That would have actually been something at least slightly enjoyable. No, this... This movie's not enjoyable in any way. So, what's it really about? Well, it's extremely cliched. Pretty much... Three people buy a house, oh by the way, they're teenagers in college, so huh, I wonder if they're going to throw a party at this house. Yep, that's the very first thing that they do after getting some of their house, after getting some of their stuff in the house. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, actually no, they don't have any stuff, because yeah, no one owns anything. Like, yeah, when I go to college, all this stuff in my room, yep, just go and get rid of all of it, you know. Say so, yeah, bring it to charity or something, you know, I don't want it. So, yeah, clearly that's what everyone does when they get to college, or at least that's what these three did, because they have literally none of their own possessions outside of, I think, their computer. <laughs> and that's really it, I, although I don't know, that might have also been the basement too, so who knows. But, yeah, pretty much, they buy this house and... They decide to have a party in it, then after everyone has left, don't know why they waited till everyone was left, don't know why everyone left, and then they decide to do this, but then they decide to have a baseball game in the backyard. No, really, they, they do that. I don't know why that was needed. So, yeah, they have a baseball game, which clearly you wouldn't want to when there are a lot of people around. Only just wait until there are four people left, and then you can have your baseball game. They're smart. So, yeah. After that, they decide to do a little test and see if Little Miss I'm Psychic is really psychic. So, they pretty much try out that she is, and then the word, the bye-bye man, gets dropped, and... Elliot kind of freaks out because he saw it in a drawer. Makes sense to me. So, yeah, after they hear that, then they all go a little bit nuts with Psychic Girl killing someone. Yeah, we never actually see any symptoms with her actually spring up. It's just she killed someone. Don't know exactly what her conditions were, seeing as it seems to be different with a lot of people. But, yeah, apparently she gets, I don't know, murderous whenever the bye-bye man is there? I don't know. So, yeah, girlfriend, that's why I call Elliot's girlfriend, because that's really all that she is. Actually, the only person whose name I remembered was Elliot, mainly because there's a scene at the end where girlfriend is just yelling Elliot a lot. So that pretty much has made me remember his name, but for the rest of them, I just pretty much classified them as stereotypes. Main character, who's Elliot's best friend, who's also the black guy, which surprisingly survives. I mean, like, he, he gets a lot of injuries, but, you know, he survives. <laughs> he should be happy about that. Like, I mean, he's the black guy in a horror movie. He survived. That's really rare. So... Yeah, he, I guess he'll be happy with that forever, or at least until he dies of his injuries in the hospital because he was severely cut and also burned, so I'm pretty sure that he will just die upon getting to the hospital, but he survived until the credits rolled, so that's something. So, yeah, pretty much just best friend, girlfriend, and sidekick girl, and Elliot. So... 
Yeah, what's their conditions? Girlfriend gets sick, best friend becomes a bit of a jerk, and sees maggots once, because, yeah, we're only focusing on what Elliot sees. Don't know why. In fact, I don't even know why they took a detour to see what best friend saw just once. I mean, if we're gonna do that, why can't we see what all the others are seeing? I mean, they do that again near the climax, but that's only because it's actually important. It would have actually been a little bit better if we could have actually seen them all seeing things, but they're trying to dis but they're trying to prove that that's not really what they're seeing, and it's just a whole entire group hysteria thing. But no, they never do that. They just think that Elliot's nuts, even though best friend saw some maggots after they heard that, and also. There have been some kind of strange things happening, but they just immediately assume that Elliot is nuts, which really makes no sense to me. I mean, at least try and find out if he's really nuts or if there is actually something to this. And the only one who does that, believe it or not, is Elliot. And he goes to the library to do this, even though he has a computer in his house, so I don't know why he had to go to the library. Maybe he couldn't take being around the bye-bye man's dog scratching walls. Oh yeah, that's what the bye-bye man's dog does. He has a huge significance. He scratches walls and shows up in wallpaper. Yeah, amazingly he's not that important, but apparently he was very, very needed to... The little sidekick of the Bye Bye Man, I don't know. So, yeah, pretty much the Bye Bye Man starts doing terrible things in the library when Elliot starts crossing out his name on the only paper doc document that he can actually find on the Bye Bye Man. Yeah, there's one box with stuff on this. Okay, so is this like a really unknown legend or something? Like, I really don't get it. Although another thing that I really don't get with these type of legends is that when you kill all the people who know your name, won't you just die? Like, shouldn't the Bye Bye Man have been dead for a long time now? I mean, I guess he kind of already is, but Shouldn't he be, like, I don't know, extra dead or sent to purgatory or something for just finishing his job? I don't know, just retire or something? Seriously, I just want to see a movie where the Bye Bye Man just sort of retires after everyone, after everyone who's known his name dies. I just, I just want to see that happen. Just like him going off and retiring with his dog. So, yeah, then the Bye Bye Man does terrible things in the library. Gets closer to Elliot. Dun dun dun! Yeah, he gets closer. Woo. Because Elliot was scratching out his name from paper documents. Because truly, you know, if anyone actually needed to find anything else on the Bye Bye Man ever again, then destroying those documents so then they had to be thrown out, which is the only thing that was actually helpful to you, would actually be a very considerate thing to do to those people, you idiots. So... Yeah, pretty much if anyone, which yes, at the end, people do hear the name again. So yeah, that family is completely screwed on finding anything about the Bye Bye Man or actually finding a way of defeating him, which is something that Elliot does because he followed this paper trail, which he has now destroyed in the library. They're gonna have to throw that out now. So yeah, he's pretty much just screwed that whole family over just because, eh, you know, I mean, the Bye Bye Man's looking at him and that's kind of rude. So he should just cross out his name. So yeah, thanks, a hole. But, yeah, things get worse to no one, really. They just get more laughable at this point. Oh, and just so you know, yeah, I was laughing in this theater. In fact, I laughed three times. Yeah. So, this is a horror movie where I laughed three times and two other people laughed once during the movie.
That's what's supposed to happen during horror movies. So yeah, it's no surprise I don't like modern horror that much. But, for some odd reason, I went to go see this one, not sure why. But, yeah, pretty much, he finds out that the way to beat the Bye Bye Man is just not being afraid of him. Which is pretty much what anyone could have figured out. He didn't need to spend a few days following this paper trail that could have just gone nowhere. And actually spreading the name curse onto more people. He could have just, you know figured it out rationally, because it's incredibly easy to find out, but, yeah, you know, just, you know, didn't really need to find that out, just like, it, it was hard to think that the bye-bye man, if you are not afraid of him, he won't do anything. I don't know. Apparently that's hard to fathom. Actually, that was my initial guess on the bye-bye man as to what you're supposed to do to beat him was that just don't be afraid of him that was my initial guess and you know what I was right so yeah during an hour and a half long movie I figured it out after like the name was said and it took this guy a few days to find out for real I guess he just needed the confirmation or he could have just ignored one of his hallucinations and you know been fine So, yeah, pretty much, you know, all the deaths in this movie could have been completely avoided if something common sense was actually put into this, but common sense in this movie, it's just a foreign concept. So, yeah, back at the house, girlfriend and best friend are kind of going nuts, and that pretty much ends with girlfriend killing best friend, or at least stabbing him a lot in his face and everything with some scissors. Which pretty much ends with Elliot shooting her in the face. Oh, by the way, if you're angry about spoilers, too bad. I'm, I'm not even going to give out an alert on this, because I'm just going to save you guys some time and just say don't watch it. Like, really, just don't watch it. So, yeah, now, pretty much... He, Elliot killed his girlfriend, he's upset, so we could probably just go back in his car and sing a song angrily again, and then he'll be fine. Oh, yeah, just so you know, that does happen in this movie. While he's going over to, um, this woman who, whose husband had pretty much heard the name and went nuts and started shooting everyone with a shotgun, and yet somehow this didn't get major coverage, apparently. You know how that works, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he that when he's going over to that woman's house, he sings a song with the word "by" in it, so therefore it ties into the movie. Can't question that logic. So yeah, while he does that, he's angrily singing along and starts punching the steering wheel. I heard that that scene was going to be in the movie, and I was waiting for it, but I thought it would happen, you know, a little bit before they heard, a little bit after they heard the name, like, after, like, maybe the first hallucination or something. And so then it would just be, like, a weird scene on its own, but I was not prepared for him angrily hitting the steering wheel. That, that was just funny. I, I also think that this movie was supposed to be a comedy. So, yeah, that's pretty much when he finds out the truth that you just don't be afraid. So, yeah, he shoots girlfriend, and on the worst times, his brother stops by. Oh, man, this is the worst time that could have happened. And he brought his little daughter. Man, not a good time. So... Pretty much the bye-bye man, then we find out the big reason as to why he can't touch you, which I guess is what he was doing when he was getting closer to him in the library, just preparing to touch him on the forehead. It pretty much makes you see a little girl who happens to be the daughter of his brother, seeing weird faces. Which I guess will imply that he'll tell her the name. Which never happens, although they do say that she saw the cabinet that has, um, the words, the bye-bye man in it, but here's the thing, she never read them, so yeah, that was a complete misdirection for no reason. 
And, yeah, it's just really pointless. They could have showed the cop family that actually does hear the name and see them going through that as he has actually interacted with this woman, so therefore he would still feel bad for her. But, no, I guess that they just need to show an even more personal connection to actually get him to feel bad for her family, because... God knows, he wouldn't just feel bad for a family if, you know, they're just innocent people who just hear the name like he is. No, he'll only care when they actually have a personal relation to him. You know, like, like all good protagonists. So, yeah, he's about ready to say the name, but won't allow it, so he shoots himself, and, yeah, he dies. Bummer. I really cared about hypnoidines. So, yeah, then all of a sudden the house burns down. Don't know why, really. It just randomly starts a fire in the attic. I don't know why. I don't know why a fire starts upstairs, but all of a sudden, fire! Because why not? So, yeah, then the best friend is the only one found alive. They find the drawer, and he tells the cop girl is the name, the bye-bye man. Oh, and by the way, the cop girl in this, who is for some odd reason really suspicious of these guys, don't really know why. I mean, like, I guess it is kind of suspicious to see a guy chasing a girl down with a hammer, but really, there could be an explanation for that, and he actually did give a reason, which is the reason he actually didn't go around and murder her. So yeah, it really is kind of weird there, but... Yeah, she's played by one of the people in Jessica Jones. Woo! Yay! So, yeah, she hears the name, although we can't hear it again, because for so much reason they mute it there. Don't know why, exactly. It's really pretty pointless. I mean, we've already heard the name in this movie, so why mute it there? I really don't get it. And then the credits... Finally, roll. <sighs> so I went into too much detail explaining the story there, but... Oh, God. Okay, so the horror in this movie? Yeah, it's non-existent. In fact, I never even felt at all frightened while watching this thing. And that's saying something, because usually, at least even with modern horror, a jump scare can at least get me a jump sometimes. Don't know why though, but really, even though it doesn't scare me, it does still get me to jump, which is really all that jump scares are for if they aren't done properly. And this movie is filled with them, but they never got me to jump once. Bravo! Bravo! Bye bye, man! You don't even get me to jump a little with fear. You're the best! So, yeah, really, this movie's horror is awful. It's nothing but jump scares, and there's, like, one scene with the stupid wallpaper thing where they actually take it slow, but even at that, I feel like they were just like, Oh, look at how good our effect is! Doesn't it look amazing? Which, no, it doesn't. It looks freaking stupid. So... Yeah, I think they were just trying to show off in that scene that they're actually taking it slow for a second, and it really doesn't work at all. Which is pretty much what I can say about this whole movie, but yeah, that scene in particular is one that doesn't even make any sense because no one sees it. I mean, seriously, why? Why even do that scene if no one's gonna see it? So... Yeah, stuff like that is littered all throughout this movie, and there's a lot of really pointless things that really go nowhere, like the girlfriend's sick because she heard the bye-bye man. That that does nothing later, just like, she has to be driven back home, and that's really all that it accomplishes. Aren't you glad for that payoff of having to go back home? Real important there. So, yeah... A lot of things like that are all throughout this movie, and they're just really, really, really pointless. Honestly, I think that this movie could have been a whole lot better if it was just actually Elliot going nuts. They do sort of hint that he could have been the one who actually went insane and started chopping up his friends, 
And that honestly would have been a much more interesting story, I think. And if maybe if it was done something like The Shining or something in that sort of style of a character just going mad, I think that would have actually made for an interesting movie. But then again, it would also have to be rated R, which is what this movie was originally going to be, but then because they want teenagers in the movie, or at least like teenagers in the theater and stuff, they just they decided to make it PG-13, which, yeah, as a teenager, and that's the only way that I can actually see this movie, I guess in some respects I'm thankful for that, but really I think that I would have preferred waiting for a while to actually see this movie and actually have it be good if they could actually do some more things with this and not just have to be able to see it when it comes out, but have it be complete crap, which I hate. So yeah. Amazingly, getting more people in your audience isn't always the best way to go. Making a good story and focusing on good characters, which this movie does not have, would have actually been the better route, and actually trying to make scares that actually fulfill their name in actually being a scare. Instead, there's just a bunch of crap thrown at you that really is never scary in the least, but they treat it like, oh yeah, this is really scary to you, isn't it? No, no it's not. It's a bunch of crap. So, yeah, this movie's pretty much this year's The Darkness, which, yeah, if you haven't seen that, don't. It's crap, too. So, yeah, really, it's just awful, and I'm honestly surprised that there were 16 other people in the theater with me and my friend. It, it honestly kind of surprised me that that many people would want to go see this. Like, why? <laughs> I mean, like, I know I went to go see it, but that's because it looked awful. But then again, there were some other people laughing throughout the movie, so I'm pretty sure that's why they went to go see it, too. So, yeah, for the horror and the actual story in this movie, it's non-existent, and it really is just awful. So for the characters, like I said before, they're all cliched. There's really nothing added to them that makes them interesting, and the only one with any real focus is Elliot, who, like I said before, if he was actually the killer and this was all just in his head, that would actually explain why his friends don't believe him on this, as this could just be something that he's seeing and his friend could just be sick, which, yeah, would actually explain a lot, and would actually make a whole lot more sense as, yeah, he'd just be the one going nuts, and there could have actually been a similar case like this, and maybe he just starts researching on this stuff a lot, and that's pretty much the point where he starts to go mad with what he's learning. That would actually make the story much more interesting, as well as the character of Elliot. But no, they don't decide to go that route. They decide to have him just sort of be, yeah, you know, a main character that you're supposed to like. And they do hint that that's pretty much what happened, like what I just said was pretty much what happened, with him going insane and everything, but... They never confirm it, and they also do continue on the bye-bye man thing at the end, just sort of saying that, eh, you know, no, nah, he's not the killer, never mind, it really is the bye-bye man, he's just, you know, this weird supernatural force that no one really gets, but, you know, I mean, he's the killer, don't question it, which, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna question it, dang it, so, yeah, really, there's just awful characters in this who are really just cliched. And I think that if we were actually on a better character, like maybe his brother, who was actually slightly more interesting, and I actually wouldn't have minded to actually see be put in this position. Maybe if it was his daughter and his wife that were the ones going nuts, and maybe his brother, then it could have actually been much more interesting if he was actually the main focus. But no, he's not in it that much, even though he is the character who would be much more interesting. But of course, no, no, we can't focus on the interesting characters. Let's just... We'll just focus on the crap characters here, who everyone has seen in a movie. I mean, yeah, sure, the family guy who's trying to who's trying to struggle taking care of his brother and also taking care of his family while also being a good father and husband. Yeah, sure, that's been done before, but he at least seemed like a likable character, or at least had potential to be. I mean, granted, he does take his daughter to a like his seven-year-old daughter to a big party with drinking college people, which, yeah, might not have been the best move, but still, I think that they could have done a lot more interesting things with him than with Elliot or with any of the other main characters in this movie. 
There's just a lot of really dumb characters in this who make asinine decisions, which you're supposed to like and care for. And no, I don't. So, yeah, what do I think of this movie overall? For my very first horror movie in a theater, it sucks. I seriously wish I had gone and seen Split or something like that instead. This movie is just really awful, and I do not recommend watching it in the least. It's a bunch of crap which seriously should just be passed over. It, oh, I say only watch it if you want to have a little bit of a good laugh during it, which you can get, but there are still m much more horror movies to actually do that in, or you can actually watch a comedy. Although if you do want to see a horror movie that's actually funny, Maybe go watch the remake of the Amityville Horror. That one's actually much more funny, and it has Ryan Reynolds doing great deliveries. So, you could go watch that if you want to see this actually be done well. With, although, then again, the Amityville Horror's intention was to actually be scary, so... Mm. But, still, at least that one is much better at being funny than this one is, and you can actually have some fun watching that one. This one is just a test in patience. So, yeah, overall, I hated this movie. Don't go watch it. I spent five bucks on this thing, and it was still too much. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye. Well, bye-bye, man, I guess. Bye-bye, man. No. The ultimate terror. Oh, no, not bye-bye. <laughs> He's going to politely say goodbye. <laughs> Don't say it, don't say it, don't take it. Let me write down the back of this. Uh, what's his name? Bye bye, man. Well, that took a lot of convincing. Yeah. <laughs> nice to know you'll you'll just easily give up his name. Yeah. If someone just asks you what it is. Like, I don't want to bring this terrible thing down on your family. <laughs> but let me say your but let me just say his name, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just <sighs> and his eyes. Yeah, like his eyes become a light yellow. Like, Ooh, ew, terrifying. Yellow. Oh no, my eyes are yellow and glowish now. Ooh, I'm terrified. Okay. I'm really glad this movie will have those jump scares for music. Goes. Yeah. Three, yeah. Two, I've even heard that there's a jump scare that no one in the house actually sees. Like, no one in the movie sees. It's strictly for the audience. How does that work? I don't know. It's like this dog thing comes out of the wall. <laughs> that's, that's what I've heard. It's like... A dog sure. comes out of the wall. And it's like the ultimate terror. <laughs> ultimate terror. <laughs> Just like, why? Like, why is that in there? Characters would come out of nowhere, and they're supposed to contribute something. Like, yeah, like, and yes, the characters are supposed to be there. Yeah, like, so was the thing like trying to just scare the audience? Just like, I know that you're there somehow. Don't don't question how I know. I just do. Yeah, okay, the characters are supposed to be there too. Like, yeah, no, actually, I think they're all asleep in that scene. Like, I, I don't know how it's supposed to work. And the dog comes down of a wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, the Bye Bye Man had a faithful dog that helps him haunt people for no reason. And it's a baby chihuahua. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know. It's kind of funny, it's like... That would be funny. It'd also be funny if they started playing, um, Bye Bye whenever someone dies. Like that one song. That would be good. Like a, if that happens, I'll love this movie. It's like, it's like one of those not, dogs aren't at least it's scary or one of those. Like, I, I don't know. It's just like, it's a dog. I've heard that there's really bad CGI in this. Oh no. Like, th this should be very encouraging when we go into this. Oh no. It's not bad CGI. <laughs> oh no. The ultimate terror. Bad CGI. One time I saw a movie of a spider, and the spider's like some worst CGI I've seen. <laughs> it, was, it was scarier than, like, than would have. How was supposed to scare me? It's like it was chasing and killing a guy. And the, the spider, the yeah. little spider's chasing yeah. and killing a guy? Yeah. And 
That, that sounds like an interesting movie. What is that? The part of the spider was that... It looks so CGI. fake. <laughs> oh, okay, the CGI is terrifying. Thing. Okay, so the CGI, the CGI might be the most terrifying thing in this. God, this picture. Look at this picture. Okay. Uh, <laughs> your phone okay? I don't know. Maybe I hit it too much. So yeah, what do you think about this movie overall? Like, what do you think it's gonna be like? I wonder if it'll be worse in the darkness. That that will be an interesting thing to find out. Let's see. Honestly, though, if Split was playing now, I'd probably go and see that. We'd probably be going and seeing that instead. If what? Split. Split. I still have to do around the bloody storm because I've seen what's called Crimson Peak. Yeah. I still haven't seen that yet. The color lady was terrifying. Hmm. So overall, you think that this movie will be bad? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so we're in the theater, got a large popcorn, because of course. <laughs> and there are a whole two Advertise other people in here. Woo! What did you think of the movie? <laughs> yes, it was awful. The, the... CGI was terrifying. <laughs> well, it was awful, if anything. Well, then again, they didn't do the Black Man Dies cliche. Yes, it's just... It's sort of assumed that he'll suffer forever with injuries. Yeah. So better? Probably insane. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you you know it's probably worse. It's probably worse for him, but at least he's alive. <laughs> yeah. Just like hey, this is what I got as my report. The bye bye man. Isn't this compelling info? This is important info. Bye bye, yeah. man. Yeah. This is good info. <laughs> yeah. Really, guys, we can trace this back to the killer. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much all in all, wish I had seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> oh no, not Kevin. 